when butterflies begin to fade. And I think we all go through, through withdrawals in the late summer when butterflies sort of, sort of start disappearing. There's still a lot of cabbage twice around and kind of just some uh, angle wings and such. <clears throat> but there's other things to do that time of year. So I found out this year, uh, I started getting involved in something a little bit different. Now those who went on the Mammoth Stash field trip this last spring, uh, this is the Weenus Road. If you remember as we went down the Weenus Road, there were these big wet spots which just loaded with butterflies. <clears throat> Way over here, it's almost off the screen, there's a little wet spot. And as you get in closer, it's a little bit better. Get in closer, you start seeing some things around us, butterflies. But some of these little spots are getting close and you to see wonderful aggregations of vespids, wasps, and hornets. And I started getting interested in them because there just weren't many butterflies around. And uh, uh, I thought it would be totally overwhelming at first, but there's, there's quite a few uh, uh, assistant, assisting uh, documents online. This is the yellow jackets of America, North Mexico. It's by the USDA Department of Agriculture, and it's a free download. <coughs> and uh, here on page 23, this is a very poor picture, but um, they show 20 different patterns of abdomens, and you can use this for identifying all of the yellow jackets that we have in this area. And there's only about half of these occur here in Washington, so really we only have 10 species. So yellow jackets are, are pretty easy uh, identification, and they're identified by these these uh, spot patterns on the back of them, somewhat on the back of their head. So just can, two uh, genera? Pardon? Just two genera? Two genera, yes. It's Vespula and... Uh, uh, Delico Vespula? Delico Vespula. Uh, so just two genera and about 10 species. And uh, as, as you look through these wet spots, you see, man, you're just surprised at the variety that you have there. Uh, here's a different uh, yellow jacket, the prairie yellow jacket, and uh, probably didn't take very close notice of the abdomen, but this is a completely different pattern. <clears throat> this is black jacket, the yellow jackets are black jackets, the same genus. And you notice some of these are flowers and some of them are on mud. And this is the old bald face part, which you've heard about a lot, and it's got the, the uh, white on the rear of its abdomen and the white on its face. And uh, this is the aerial yellow jacket. You see this, I've, I've been seeing this name called out a lot of some of the listservs, people seeing aerial yellow jackets. They're actually closer to really the bald face harness rather than the western yellow jacket. The western yellow jacket is the one that bothers you at picnics. <coughs> you see other neat things around. This is a human wasp. This is a, one of the wasps that use this long ovipositor to stick their ovipositor down in rotten wood and, and uh, lay their egg on some kind of a grub that's in the wood and they're, they're parasitic. Here's another group of wasps. These are the paper wasps. And, they tend to have a very broken pattern on the abdomen. We have a couple of these, golden paper and then the European paper, which is introduced. They're kind of big, sparkly, uh, uh, not yellow jacks, but wasps. And can you beat that for a name, Great Golden Digger Wasp? <laughs> that is so cool. <clears throat> what is interesting about this is I took all of these pictures in two days. Uh, the, the ones that are on mud are all on that those little wet spots on the Venus Road. Ones that are on flowers are all up at the uh, uh, Snoqualmie Pass at Gold Creek, you know, where the Gold, the Gold Creek Pond is, where they have that big parking area. There's, there's just no flowers around and it was just loaded. And this is all after, which after the butterfly season. So this is all the neat things you can see. Thread wasted wasp. This is a, another type of wasp called a sand wasp. Kind of, they're, they're small little things. And this is the actual, one of the actual bees. Bees kind of fade out about the same time as butterflies do. So many of the bees are gone when the butterflies are gone. This is a leaf cutter bee. Uh, you're probably not going to be able to identify these because there's at least 26 species of them in Washington. So uh, you just kind of enjoy them for what they are. And then we get into the flies. The flies, there's a lot of bee in the flies. Here is a yellow jacket on the right. and a hoverfly or flowerfly on the left. And uh, these, these flowerflies are really neat little things. Some of them are beautifully patterned. Uh, you notice that the, the hornets and yellow jacks have these long antennae. 
those SIPA, SIPA fire, hover fires, these tiny little antennas, these are completely harmless. There's no stingers. Uh, <clears throat> they uh, can be identified by their eyes, which touch in the middle or almost touch, whereas the eyes of hornets and wasps are separated. And also, these have just two wings. It's, it's hard to tell that the hornets and wasps and bees have four wings. They hold them so close together, it's hard to see them. <coughs> And here's one of the here's another of the serpents or flower flies. More than a hundred species thought to be in Washington. You're not going to identify these, so just enjoy them for what they are. <laughs> I was waiting for the book to come out. I was trying to learn them, but I want a nice, you know, guide to at least the, the flies big enough to uh, see. But I couldn't find any. Good luck. <laughs> there's a there's quite a few free downloads on the web. And there's a Canadian publication free download that's uh, on the circuit flies. And you can see from the range maps, which only go down to the Washington border, you can get a pretty good idea of which ones extend on into Washington. And just going through those range maps, I figured, yeah, there's more than 100 species here. <coughs> but look at the patterns of these things. They're wonderful. And they're uh, pretty easy to approach. You've got to notice the little tiny antennae making a fly. You can see pretty well here, it just has two legs. And there's all of these neat patterns of these little circuit flies. All these flower pictures were up there at Gold Creek. Oh. And again, all of these were just in two days, one day at the Weymouth Road and one day at the at the Gold Creek. So you don't so, count those uh, those haltiers as wings? I'm sorry? You don't count the haltiers as wings? Tell me what that is. The haltier? Haltier. Mm -hmm. Those are those little, I've been told they're stabilizers. Go to the previous slide, it's a little easier to see. Um, <clears throat> there's a little wing-like structure in, uh, behind the, that big wing, tiny thing with a little uh, fattened head, <coughs> a little bit like a pinhead. So okay. in front of that visible leg, there's what starts to look like a leg. You'd go ahead of that there. Yeah. Okay. And then on the other side, it's even easier oh, okay. to see. That's, that's kind of a balance organism, isn't it? I heard it's for balancing. I've been told they're called haltiers. Okay. I don't think they count as wings, but uh, uh, basically all flies have, they're, of course, they're in the, the group called the Yinker, which means two, two wings. I think it's semantics, though. You could, yeah. you could uh, evolutionarily, I believe, that's from the hind wing. Okay. Well, that's good. And you can see again how the, the, the eyes touch on these flies, these, these serpents or flower flies or hover flies. But look at all the different patterns you see. It's just, a, just amazing all of these patterns you got. And uh, so what I'm saying is extend your season. There's, uh, when butterflies disappear, there's some really neat stuff out there. You know, they're pretty easy to photograph. The, the hornets and wasps are not aggressive for some reason. You can get right up and photograph them. Uh, you can learn a whole new group of interesting, well, several groups here. There's wasps and there's bees and there's serpent flies. Uh, and uh, it just, it's just an enjoying thing to do, enjoyable thing to do. So just another thing to do. Um, are hornets and wasps the same? Or <coughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh, hornets are technically old world. Oh. Uh, what we call hornets really are wasps. And uh, again, they occur in those two genera. Uh, so yeah, it's, there's really only about 10 species here. But there's other things that are, are called wasps too, like the big bull and bigger wasp. That was totally different genus. But it's called a wasp. But another question. Another question. But, um, there's the famous hornets and nest. But do all wasps have nests like that? Do you know? Yeah, there's a there's a great variety of nests. Some some will, will build these little tiny mud nests and they just that's just one female legs in that and uh, and they'll just make a bunch of those nests and uh, others have those big paper nests and others actually have their nest out of the ground others will be in rotten wood so that there's a there's a whole variety of different nesting uh, uh, processes so. yes at my school they have like a they lay eggs in rot, like they have nests in rotwood. Would you say like if by rotwood do you mean like wood that's in buildings, kind of that's like in quarters, I guess? They can go into buildings, but mostly it's in rotten logs. Like, 
right. you know, that are really badly rotten. They can just they can eat a hole out of them. Uh, things that eat in the houses are usually more like ants and plant ants. Yeah, because there's a, there's a nest just above where I line up in school. So, and, it, and they look like hornets. Right. Oh, they probably could be hornets, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, just so it's one more thing to do. And uh, you know, I found it really enjoyable and challenging. Uh, you can take good photographs. That you, you can't identify a lot of these by photographs. There's just too many species. But some groups you can. And uh, it's just a nice new group to learn about. So that's it. Okay. Thank you.